The last time you were here, I believed that you testified that you had diagnosed Ms. Hurd with PTSD before you gave the gold standard CAPS-5 test. That's correct. Right. And that diagnosis is actually reflected in the first of the disclosures you put forward in this case. I believe the first disclosure was February 2021. And at that point, I had done um, 11 psychological tests. That's correct. Right. And your disclosure reads, Ms. Hurd's responses on the PCL-5 support a DSM-5 diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder with an ideology, ideology of intimate partner violence she experienced by a former partner. Remember writing that? That's correct. Okay. You just testified that you need to read the manual, right? Yes. Okay. Can we put up 1311 as a demonstrative? Any objection to Thank you. I, I don't see this in my I, document either. They're, they're getting the right one up. Yeah, we got it up. Mm -hmm. uh, let's use 1312. 1312. Okay. And that, any objection to that demonstrative? No, Your Honor. Okay. 1312 can be published to the jury. Dr. Hughes, um, do you recognize what, what the National Center for PTSD is? What it is? Yeah. Yes, I do. And, and they publish um, the PTSD checklist for DSM-5. That's correct. That what we've been calling the PCL-5. Correct. All right. And do you, uh, are you familiar with the document that's uh, on your screen? Yes. All right. What is it? Uh, it's... The instruction manual to how to administer the PCL-5. Okay. I'd like to move for the admission of 1312. Any objection to 1312 coming into evidence? No. All right, 1312 in evidence. All right. Can we go to the second page? Can we blow up the second paragraph on the right? That's... The PCL-5 should not be used as a slow diagnostic tool. Considering, when considering a diagnosis, the clinician will still need to use, to use clinical interviewing skills and a recommended structured interview, e.g. the CAPS-5, to determine a diagnosis, correct? That's what the, that's what the manual says. Right, and this manual okay. also, also says that this is a screening instrument, so when you do the clinical interviewing, you absolutely can determine diagnosis. So the answer somebody. is yes. The manual says you, 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 you still the, need the to PCL use clinical 5. interviewing skills, which I used. Well, the, uh, let me finish my question. The PCL-5 should not be used as a standalone diagnostic tool, and they recommend using the CAPS-5 to determine a diagnosis, correct? It does say that, yes. Yeah, and you made your diagnosis before you did the CAPS-5? I made my diagnosis doing clinical interviewing and 11 other psychological tests that supported diagnosis of PTSD and symptomatology consistent with PTSD. Okay. Um, you said that we should read the manual. Would you also agree with me that we need to read the directions? 
on these tests? Sure. Okay. Tom, can you pull up 1309 as a demonstrative? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any objection of 1309 as a demonstration? Uh, may we approach? Okay. and publish the jury as demonstrative. Doctor, do you recognize the uh, demonstrative that's in front of you? Yes, but I didn't put the red lines on that. No, I did. Yes, I know. Okay. Um, so, this, what do you recognize this as? I recognize that we previously discussed this and I told you that I oriented Ms. Heard to a different time frame because she was already out of the relationship. Okay, um, maybe we should back it up a little. This is the CTS-2 that you administered as part of this battery of tests that you indicate you, ought, uh, you did in relationship to your diagnosis. Right, this is the conflict tactic scale too. And you'll agree with me that this test specifically asks in front of every single question how often did this happen in the past year correct and i right. oriented and the individual know, to and not and limit herself to the last me. year to get an accurate assessment of the violence and abuse that she experienced yeah. in the Good. relationship objection you're going to move to strike the all right i'll move to strike the last part of the answer yes. i mean I'll strike the last part of the answer thank you Next question. Yeah. And you know that at the time that you gave this test to Ms. Hurd, she had been away from Mr. Depp for far longer than a year, correct? Which is why I oriented yeah. her to a different yes time no, frame in answering the question. Doctor, yes or no? So, of course. Okay. You knew she was gone for more than a year? Of course. All right. Let's look at another one of these. You talked about the danger. You, you talked about the danger assessment test. That's correct. All right. What number is this? Thirteen. Thirteen plaintiffs. Thirteen ten. Thank you. Any objection to the 1310 uh, as no, a demonstrative? Yeah. Okay. You published the jury. Dr. Hughes, uh, this is a blank form, but this is the dangerous assessment test that you also gave to Ms. Hurd, correct? I didn't give it to her. I filled it out based on the data that was provided to me. Oh, so you, you asked her the questions and then you filled it in. It, it was somewhat collaborative. Okay. Can we blow up the second full paragraph? It says, using the calendar, please mark the approximate dates during the past year when you were abused by your partner or ex-partner. You didn't use any calendar, did you? I did not use a calendar because she was already out of the relationship. As I said, these are stat static risk factors, so they don't change. So but I orient her to the time of the re relationship. Ma'am, it's fair to say that this examin examination that you gave specifically indicates that, it's, that you were supposed to look over the past year. 
And you, that's, that's not one, the language? No, that's one administration. People use this instrument for if you're in an acute situation in a relationship, trying to get a better assessment of the current behaviors. We can use it retrospectively, like I just stated, and in homicides and looking back about what are the serious risk factors that were in this relationship. I didn't ask you about anything other than don't the instructions limit this test to the previous year? You can give this test not only on the previous nope, year. asking you about the instructions. But I'm telling you how the test is administered in clinical practice and, and in forensic and you, practice. And opposing counsel can, can come up and ask questions about it. I'm asking you about the instructions. And the instructions say, look over the past year. And yeah, on this, yes, that it says that. And you had actual knowledge when you gave the test that Mr. Depp was gone way more than a year before this test. That is correct. Right. All right. Let's look at more instructions. Uh, can we look at 1247, which is already in evidence? Dr. Hughes, you recognize this one too, right? Yes. All right. This is the, what everybody calls the CAPS-5. Correct. All right. Can we go to the first page? Let's blow up the instructions. Standard administration and scoring of the CAPS-5 are essential for producing reliable and valid scores and diagnostic decisions. Correct? Correct. And you know you have to do this in a standardized way because it is the first instruction, correct? Correct. Can we go to the, ne uh, to the next page? One more. Oh, wait. That's good. This is a page on scoring, and, and we talked about this last time. Yes. You score these tests by frequency and intensity. Correct. And you'll remember that in every single instance that you were asked to fill in the blank about frequency, you failed to do so. Correct? That's not correct. Oh. You, you filled in any blank on this form with respect to frequency? I filled in the frequency on the side of the CAPS where I am actually scoring the CAPS. No, I asked where you whether relevant. you filled in a single blank on this form with respect to frequency. Is the answer to that yes or no? I don't know what you mean, a single blank. All right, let's, let's page. Let's keep going. All right, let's, we'll, we'll stay at this page for a second. Uh, this is the very first box you're asked to fill in as to, I think, a fairly fundamental question, right? What happened? We talked about this before, Mr. Dennison. I had 88 pages of notes of what happened. It would have been redundant to put it there. You know that you are obligated to produce this test in a way that other people can meaningly review them. Yes. The people in this case who are meaningfully reviewing them have my 88 pages of notes. Right. But you chose is... to put absolutely nothing in the box, the standardized box, that said what happened. You don't have to put it in the box if you have it somewhere else. It's because not a, this if is it's not, not a standardized test? Well, if it's not a research instrument that is used for research, if you're using it for a clinical diagnostic purpose, no, you don't, if okay. you have that data elsewhere. Okay. Let's go another page, another page or so. so. All right. Let's go another one. Let's look at item 4B4. And I asked you, you filled in the blank about frequency. And there's a blank in many of these items that asks number of times. You didn't fill a single one of them in, did you? Right, right, because I filled them on the right side of the instrument where I am scoring it. And that is the way that you believe that you followed the instructions of a standardized test? Yes, correct. No further questions. All right, redirect. Very briefly. You used the term 